long last, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 4 has finally been announced. This is a title that anime game fans have been waiting on since the day that they set eyes on Tenkaichi 3, objectively the best game out of the DBZ games. And I don't say that lightly. I mean, let's reminisce, shall we? 2015 rolls around and Dragon Ball Xenoverse is announced, and much to nobody's surprise, it's ass. The fighting mechanisms were reimagined from any of the past games, and somehow they managed to really stuff it up somehow. I mean, the golden ticket to beating the game was to get Super Saiyan and then just literally gimp the system by using your infinite key window to spam beam ultimates. I can't stress enough how effective the combat was for Tenkaichi 3. Combat felt fluid, especially in the air, which is important in a game where 90% of the combat is done in the sky. Combos were easy to memorize and perform, but still very fast paced. The key gauge felt exactly how it should with the 5 bar system, forcing you to think tactically and carefully about when and where you charge up, as well as the right time for a special attack, as opposed to just the 1 bar system where it just feels like you're playing Naruto and charging up for one attack. Speaking of bars, the health bar system was also very effective. The additional health bars that characters got in the game made the experience feel authentically Dragon Ball. Like we want to get knocked into buildings and thrown around and have a big epic battle that lasts longer than 30 seconds max. Fighter Z, I'm looking at you. Fighter Z was an interesting entry for the series as it's arguably one of the better ones, donning a unique 2D style that honestly is the most aesthetically pleasing art style out of the lot, even including Tenkaichi 3. But I don't know man, something about it just doesn't feel like a Dragon Ball Z game. Maybe it's because Dragon Ball Z as a concept is so rooted in mobility, characters flying acres away after one punch, flying at mock speed towards your opponents. It's an aspect of Dragon Ball Z that's pretty damn crucial, or it just feels like another Street Fighter game, with Kamehameha instead of Another aspect that I'm excited to see return is Tenkaichi's character roster. I've always been a big advocate for large character rosters when it comes to anime games, since anime in and of itself places such a heavy importance on each character and their individual journeys. It's cool to see obscure characters be given a spotlight. This is something I definitely expect to be part of 4, as it's always been a staple. And on that note, it's also worth noting that the campaign is easily one of the best campaigns in the gaggle of games that they have. The game covers the Sand Saga all the way to the Majin Buu Saga, as well as the Special Saga, which is the movies, the Dragon Ball GT Saga, and a rehash of the original show, the Dragon Ball Saga, all in its entirety. That's an amount of content that nowadays we could only dream of getting, despite paying triple the price. In 2020, CyberConnect 2 released Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, which outside of being a typical mid-Dragon Ball Z game, had the caveat of only containing three of the seven arcs that were in Tenkaichi 3. Not to mention the additional bonus arcs that were of course only sold separately, because you're not a modern game today without DLC, of course. Not only that, but why are we rehashing arcs that we've seen in game format for the past decade? Like the presentation is not going to get any better than how it was in 3. And that's not me being biased, that's just how thorough Tenkaichi was. They included advanced details such as side characters, pre-transformation and transformation moments, the entire arcs, and now 10 years later Kakarot wants to give us rehashes? Like get the hell out of here. And while we're on the page of being annoyed, certain Dragon Ball games feel the need to add character creation menus and hub lobbies. I mentioned this in my original anime games video, please oh please developers stop adding this function. Nobody cares about making their own character that has the same drip as their other characters in the series, with no other purpose other than being a voiceless being that wanders the hub lobby, doing Fortnite emotes. I don't know when this became such a popular thing in anime fighters, since it really doesn't belong here. It's a mechanism that works a lot better in titles like Street Fighter 6, as it's more of an arcade experience, but in anime games it just comes off as tacky and eye rolling. How about instead of making a pointlessly detailed hub area and stupid emotes, you work on unique game modes that add variety to the one note gameplay that all fighting games suffer from. In Tenkaichi 3, there was a bunch of game modes to keep the game feeling fresh despite boxing being the main activity, several different tournaments with single player challenges ranging from different difficulties and characters, as well as Sim Dragon, Mission 100, Survival, and Disc Fusion on the PS2. They also had DP points battles where you'd battle in multiplayer for who gets the most points per down, and a bunch of other ones. I don't know when fighting games started lacking, but a lot of titles nowadays even fail to have basic single player or co-op tournament modes, which is honestly just embarrassing. A fighting game without a tournament mode is like waffles without syrup, and we all know only psychopaths do that. 
Before we continue on any further, if you're a viewer of the channel, you know how important I take developers and their track record. It's worth noting that back in 2007, the developers for Tenkaichi was Spike, a solo company that had some bangers under its belt, but mostly under the DBZ name. Since then, Spike has been liquidated into what is now known today as Spike Chunsoft. I'm not going to beat around the bush here. As of today, Spike Chunsoft has produced the worst anime fighting titles in the game, and they continue to astound with unique ways to cut the genre into its worst years yet. The company and individuals who worked on Budokai Tenkaichi 1, 2, and 3 are no longer there. And there's a part of me that worries that 4 might be an underperformance for the series simply because it's been so long. Paying attention to who develops a game is an easy indication of how the title will turn out. And this, being Spike Chunsoft's recent track record, <laughs> does not spell good. I pray that history does not repeat itself. All they need to do is copy what they did for the past three Tenkaichi games, as well as the Budokai games, and implement new characters. That's all we ask for. No hub areas or character creation, no unique storylines with shitty animations and shitty writing, and dear god please, no forced teammates with one single health bar. I'm begging you. All that's left to do now is wait for fall, and cross our arthritis-plagued gamer fingers that Spike Chunsoft doesn't f*** this up like their previous titles. My name is Jalen, and I am a Super Saiyan. Um, I spent most of my childhood playing Tenkaichi 3, so I definitely felt the need to make this video. I'm really excited that they are making a Tenkaichi 4. I'm really afraid though that they're not going to do it justice, and that would be devastating. I got very excited for Jump Force whenever it was announced, because I was a big fan of J-Stars when it was announced. But they failed horrifically whenever they made Jump Force, and they could possibly do the same thing here. It's the same company. The same company that made a good game in the past, and then made a bad game immediately after. I mean, I say immediately, it was like years and years later, but you get the point, okay? There's a big possibility that they messed this up, and I'm praying that that is not the case. Let me know what you think and your predictions in the comments. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe if you want to subscribe, and you know, maybe if you got some free time, try to go Super Saiyan, you know? You never know what might happen. You absolutely never know. Or maybe you do know and you're just afraid of the consequences. Well, don't be afraid anymore. We're really out here. They could have animated it and made it look cool. Why'd they have to do this? This is so fucking lazy.